Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome to another edition of the League One Lowdown where I speak to fans, podcasters and journalists that cover all things League One. Today I'm joined by senior sports writer from the Oxford Mail covering Oxford United and that is James. James, first of all, welcome to the show and um, give us an introduction on you covering Oxford, how long you've been doing it for and um, it's been an exciting time to be an Oxford reporter. Yeah, uh, no, thank, firstly thank you for having me. Um, yeah, um, I've been following the Oxford United journey for, for a while now, only about eight months as the sort of the main man, I guess guess you could say, or, or the only man really on the sports desk here. Um, but yeah, I've been on the sports desk at, at, at the Mail for, for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of come at the right time to uh, play off campaigns in a row, albeit unsuccessful. Um, but yeah, kind of on and off the pitch, things look like they're going in the right direction. So uh, fingers crossed it stays that way. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's always heartbreaking. It's always hard to bring teams back after losing the playoffs. Um, Cole Watson's been able to do that. Um, this season ahead in League One, we we're speaking off air and I said this on previous videos, League One is going to be one of the toughest leagues to get out of this year. Championship 2.0, I'm quoting as. Um, Oxford United business end. Let's look into the transfer window. Um, I've been looking. Made some good signings. Not many players lost. Only maybe Josh Ruffles, the left back, who's gone to Huddersfield Town. But for you, as reporting the side, who are the the key standout signings that you have made so far? Yeah, well, I think um, United's transfer business has been patient. I think is the way I'd describe it. Um, we kind of had uh, Marcus Bergwain come in, so midfielder um, who was on loan from Nottingham Forest. Obviously, got an incredible pedigree and been in Arsenal's academy and then played for Barcelona B. Um, he took a while to get going last season and just when he was seriously kind of looking a real player, um, sort of got a thigh injury that actually kept him out for the rest of the season. But that got done nice and early, three-year deal. Um, so obviously he must have put a bit, well, they did put a bit of money into that. Um, he was probably the standout one for me in that he was the sort of player that you could see given a whole season and, and providing he gets back to full fitness nice and quickly could be a real a real sort of key part of, of the midfield his his kind of general position would be uh sort of in carl robinson's 4-3-3 one of the two more advanced midfielders um other than that it's been some sort of quite solid signings league one pedigree so ryan williams uh is one i'm sure fans will know because he's been around for a little bit had been at oxford seven or eight years ago um and uh, came from Portsmouth, obviously solid League One winger. Um, a little bit from left field, Billy Bowden um, from from Preston North End, or he'd been released by Preston, had loads of injury troubles, but had really sort of set League One alight with Bristol Rovers a few years ago. Um, and fans were kind of being a bit impatient for a couple of weeks as it kind of gets during the close season. And, and then yesterday... Um, well, as when this will go out, it will be last week probably. But uh, uh, making the signing of Steve Seddon from from Birmingham City, left back with plenty of League One experience, despite only being twenty three, and uh, and yeah, um, so it's been patient. They've kind of waited to get the right men in, um, but I think all four you could you could you know you could say solid League One pedigree and, and should hopefully be able to hit the ground running. And of course, we're recording this with a month and a half or maybe less than that with the transfer window still to go. Um, do you think they'll make some more marquee signings? Any positions you think they're lacking in? You know, they've got the goal scorer, Matty Taylor, but is anybody else you think they need to bring in? I think you probably say they still need a centre-back. Um, so one of the, the players lost was Rob Atkinson to Bristol City. He sort of had an incredible, really, breakthrough season last year and and named in the league one team of the year um got an got an, a young irish center back called luke mcnally who's kind of seen as the successor to him although because of injury and and covid and various things like that he will probably still need time to get back up to speed so i think a, a center back to partner elliot moore um would still be ideal um maybe more left back cover because having one is you know you know 46 game season plus cut games is never uh, never ideal um and Carl Robinson with his love of wingers um does want two more wingers uh I know United are, are, have been sort of looking at Gavin White who has obviously got very good league one pedigree and in the championship with Cardiff um not sure if any of any deals are close at the moment but uh but yeah uh I think those positions would be the ones to focus on 
And let's talk about, you know, two players now for Oxford. Um, last year, they came out of nowhere. They, I, I thought, wow, when I was looking at the table halfway through the season, I thought, what is happening with Oxford? They're down there, but they then came like a steam train, got into the playoffs. Um, as I said before, it's going to be a hard division to, to, to predict this year. What are you thinking at the moment? Early door prediction. Where do you think Oxford will be this year? Poor. Well, um, I think if the season started today, if the season started right now, I would probably say somewhere between 7th and 12th. I think as it stands, the squad is is good, but not quite strong enough to uh, to get in the top six, especially like you say, you know, numerous teams will think that they can get in the top six and probably in a normal season will this season. Um if they can make that those couple of extra signings in those areas, I think they'll definitely be pushing because obviously, you know, like you say, they've got they know how to Carlson knows how to build the League One playoff team done it the last two years and in the last two seasons have been done by despite having poor starts. So if they can start the season okay uh, and make one or two signings, there's no reason why they can't be sort of in the mix. Yeah, and of course we we. I think we don't play Oxford for a while, which is sound Oxford. That's for you know, it's not not really early days in the, into the season. I think it's back in November. I think we're gonna be playing each other. Um, the previous fixtures have been very dull. Uh, goalless draws, lovely goalless draws. Um, but the players that, that have you know played for Oxford, you know, you watch them week in week out. What what sort of players should we look out for? Or is there still that marquee signing that you have to say no? Wait until they make that signing to say that is the player to watch. But any other players that we should fear? We're not to take on uh, town. Yeah, I think as it stands, um, McGuane is is one. Like I say, I think he's got so much potential. Still very young, only twenty two. If by the time we do play, I think it's November the thirteenth. Um, if he is sort of up to speed, you know, I, by then he should be a real player um, alongside Cameron Brannigan in the midfield. Those two could be a real, you know, top league one partnership there. Um, when I was thinking about this before, I I wanted to bring in a couple that that fans might not kind of know of who who could have quite big seasons this year. So one of them is Mark Sykes, who I think was actually linked with Ipswich earlier in the summer. Uh, I believe Ipswich probably moved on since then because there's been about half a dozen signs. But um, he uh, he's a sort of attacking midfielder, wears a number ten for United. You know, lovely lovely footballer, and that uh, he's got a great touch and, and great vision. Just not great at converting that into sort of assists and goals, but he's a sort of player that got better and better at the end of last season. And and if he can carry that on, will be class. Uh, and a player in the similar mould is Dan Adji. He's been at the club now for two years. Striker with plenty of pace, you know, really strong. And again, was the last two months of last season was as consistent as he's been at Oxford. So those two players could, could be really, really big for this season just by chipping in with goals and assists. Yeah. Now, let's talk about Ipswich Town. As an outsider, you know, you, of course, you have to cover Oxford week in, week out, but I'm sure you have to then do your your, your facts and stats on the other sides when we play each other. Um, but what have you thought of the transfer business that Town have made so far? You know, we've got new owners, Ed Sheeran has a new sponsor and stuff like that. They're very ambitious, uh, made a lot of good League One signings so far. Scott Fraser, Joe Piggott and all that sort of stuff. Lee Evans, I can name all. But uh, what's, your, what's your thoughts as an outsider seeing these signings and do you think Town will finally... Be in the playoffs. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, when I uh, I remember when the takeover happened because it was towards the end. Well, it was before the end of last season, wasn't it? Sort of March, April, I think. Um, and I and I remember thinking at the time, you know, when clubs get taken over over the summer, it normally takes a bit of time to bed in, and you maybe don't see the kind of fruits that come to fruition straight away. Whereas to get that time, and I know Paul Cook took charge of. Don't know how many games, but a few games at the end of last season. Having that time to get used to the club and and really sort of pin down the summer strategy. And I I thought at the time, well, Ipswich are going to be a real force, and and yeah, the transfer business has really um really sort of uh, in, increased that thought for me. Um, Scott Fraser, I, I I've been a fan of for a while. I think he was at Burton before MK. Um, scored a hat trick against United a couple of years ago, and and just looked a real quality player. Pigger, obviously, everyone knows about him. He's been around for a while, and, and it's just a, a, you know anyone that scores that many goals for for a club. With no disrespect to the Wimbledon, who are at the, near the bottom of the league, uh, is, is clearly good, and he's, he's got it at this level, I, I think. And then there's some quite good young signings to supplement that as well. Uh, I think 
I'd be amazed at this stage if Ipswich didn't finish in the playoffs. I don't know whether that's heaping undue pressure on, but um, yeah, I mean, out of all the clubs that look like they could be in the promotion mix, for me, Ipswich at the moment have the strongest shout of, of being top six and maybe even top two. <laughs> Yeah, and of course this season fans are back. Um, I'm sure as a reporter, it's been it's been soulless watching the games. You know, you know, very lucky position to be able to cover games. But I'm sure fans being back is going to change the dy- dynamic of every game we're going to be covering and watching this year. Um, is that would that be the same for Oxford? You know, Oxford they do get good crowds, and the last two years has been they've been in the playoffs, and definitely last year. Um, I'm sure maybe do you reckon Cole Robertson would have gone if fans were it being? Would they have been shouting for his head to go? I don't know what the forums were like, but um, is Cole Robertson, do you think he's the man to definitely lead Oxford again this year? Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't think uh, his sort of position was ever seriously under threat. He'd, he'd have had sort of just signed a four year deal just when the season started. And I think the owners, or well, the, the board do think he's the right man. And, and, I, and I do think he is. Um, He's there's 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 some there are some criticisms that people have of him as as of every manager, but you know over the last two years he like I said before he's shown he knows how to get a team in the playoffs in League League One and and he's got a uh, hit throughout his three years at Oxford he's been very good at kind of once his teams get up to speed which admittedly has taken longer than it should especially last season but once they do. They do. They are. They are capable of going on good runs, and and there are plenty of performances towards the back end of last season where you just thought, you know, this is a team that, if they just started playing a month earlier, would be right up there this season. So, uh, I mean, it will be brilliant with fans, and I can't wait for that first. I can't wait for that first away game, especially because Oxford had a few home games with fans. But that first away game where I look to my left or right or wherever it is, and I see a, a load of yellow in the away end, will be fantastic and. Uh, and yeah, hopefully it will all come together into a beautiful season where uh, the fans can watch Oxford make another playoff push. Definitely, and uh, we'll, f- we'll finish on, um, of course, it's Town versus Oxford when we do play. Um, as I said, the last couple of games against each other, it's been goalless, it's been dull, it's been boring. Although the weather has never helped, I think it's always been rainy or it's always a Tuesday night. Uh, what are you expecting for those games? You know. Idrid Town will be a, a, a new look side. Paul Lambert won't be in a dugout. It'll be Paul Cook. And have a Paul. We love appointing Pauls. Um, what do you reckon you would expect from that? I know it's going to be the season would have been halfway. Well, the first half of the season would have been done by then. But um, you you hoping for better games? Oh, I really hope so. I mean, the, the February game at Portman Road, the nil-nil there, that was uh, that was pretty dire. <laughs> so if it's not any better than that, then we're in trouble. But I, I think by then it should be a real occasion I think it's away isn't it or or away for Oxford in November and you know both teams will sort of know a bit about you know themselves by that point they'll have probably settled on a on a starting 11 and again with fans it should be a great atmosphere I, I'm expecting it to which I know the season ticket sales there have been pretty good um I'm expecting it switch to, to get quite good crowds this season so uh so yeah I think it'll be a uh it'll be an entertaining one and, and it's two teams that I mean, who knows where Oxford will be and if they will make the signs, but Ipswich especially, you know, should be exciting this year. So uh, I, I have to say going there will probably be one of the more intimidating away trips this season. Uh, but no, I mean, it's always a great ground to go to and hopefully uh, hopefully, it'll be a game to live up to it. Definitely, mate. Well, well, thanks once again, James, for joining me. Anything else you'd like to add before we, we wrap up? For uh, just that don't be surprised if uh, a team that you think is going to finish in the top six finishes in the bottom half this season just we were talking before who knows what's going to happen there's so many uh so many promotion contenders uh and uh and yeah i think it'll be class and, and just with the fans back as well we'll just make it extra special yeah, you're going to use the phrase it's going to go down to the wire maybe the last game of the season there you know could be any, all positions could change after a result but I cannot wait. I think it's going to be a very exciting season in League One. James, thank you very much for joining me once again. Um, hope everybody's enjoyed watching. Oxford fans, Town fans, let us know what you think in the comments down below. And that has been another edition of the League One Lowdown. I'll be back very soon for another edition soon, speaking to another fan, podcast or journalist covering their side. So bye-bye for now. <laughs>